Look at the line going into that thing. You know, you and I are going to Mariana soon. Like this big. Remember, right? Yes. So, where's... We can... Don't just say yes and look away. You know where I'm headed. Not here. Hey, hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And today we'll be reacting to a video released yesterday on the uh, Blue World TV channel, Jonathan Bird. Wow, Our really? buddy Jonathan Bird, yep. Yeah. Uh, they went diving on a cave in Mariana, which we love. Which we love. Okay. Right? And uh, I actually thought, because I've heard a lot about this cave, but there's not a whole lot of video. Wait, this is a cave in Mariana that we have not dove. We, no way. Okay. And we're not going. So well, uh, let me let me just start. Spoiler alert: We will not be diving this cave. Um, but that's but, not set in stone, everybody. Well, yeah, you haven't seen the video, but I think when you see the video, you'll agree with me. Okay. So anyway, so there's this cave in Mariana, and I've heard about it mainly because where we stay when we go diving there, you know the 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 cabins, the trailers where we stay, they have names of caves, right? Uh, so there's JB and whatever. And one of the cabins is named Shangri La. And I'm yes. like, what is that? That's the name of a cave. So there's not a whole lot of videos on YouTube about Shangri La, the cave. It's hard to find. So I'm like, what okay. is it? What is it about this cave that there's no video about it? Luckily, Jonathan Bird, who's like probably the best underwater videographer in the world, <laughs> oh, decides definitely. to go diving in Shangri La and he recorded his dive. Well, but. Wait, so now I'm automatically thinking if Jonathan went diving in this cave, then what in the world are you seeing in here that you don't want to dive it? I well, mean, Jonathan dove it. Let's find out. I'm thinking we're going to dive it. Let's find out. Coming up, Jonathan and Todd explore a super small cave. It's a claustrophobic nightmare. Yep. That's, that's exactly why. Jonathan we'll go with Jonathan Bird's Blue World. That looks amazing. It's a beautiful day on Merritt's Mill Pond. Oh, beautiful there. Located in Mariana, Florida, just west of Tallahassee, this small man-made lake contains entrances to seven different caves. Today, cameraman Todd, Zach of all trades, and I are looking for one of the smallest caves on the pond. Wow. We rented a pontoon boat to explore as many of the caves as we can manage in our short visit. That's boat. You've been we on that head boat. north from our rental house in search of shank. Trying to stop it? Yeah, I was just going to say that it's super shallow. I don't. I didn't know that till the last time I went out there. So I'm just pointing that out. The prop is constantly like churning up that seaweed or whatever that is under there. Yeah. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Cave. beautiful. It's easy to find because of the crystal clear water that. surrounding the entrance. We pull our boat gently into the shallow water near shore. How did I not? There's know a small that? metal post to tie off the boat. Look at the water. Dude. Lasso it looks more. awesome. It's just there. Not this cave, but well, I will enjoy it on video. Because on. I don't know why I didn't. Next didn't to us, about this. clear water flows oh. strongly from this spring. It's the kind of inviting water that cave divers crave. I crave it right now. We got now. some pointers from local instructor Medi Zanetti. Yes. So we know this is going to be a very tight cave, which sounds fun. With this in mind, <laughs> yes. we suit up for some adventure. So far, I'm only seeing yes, yes, and when. <laughs> uh, oh. We have a quick peek inside so we can figure out our plan. Look at that flow, Gus. Blowing straight up. <laughs> yeah, it's fire hydrant. We have a short chat and decide to bring only GoPro cameras because our regular cameras are too big for this cave. Wow. Really? <laughs> wow. I, I don't know. Something's is that, wrong with me because everything they're saying is like making me pleat. Medi. <laughs> come on, dude. I mean. Okay. I don't know if you Jonathan, heard. Jonathan. Bird. I don't, I don't know. Come on. I don't know if you heard what he just said. He's, 
He said, we will bring our GoPro cameras because our regular cameras, which are not that big, won't fit. But he fits with his GoPro. That's big enough. I I don't know how he... I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit speechless, which is rare. I absolutely can't believe I've not heard of this cave or dove this cave. I mean, well, Matty, I've been with you for days there. What in the <laughs> heck? Okay, let's keep going. Uh, by the way, uh, Jonathan and Todd are diving side mount. Uh, they're not diving rebreathers, but uh, they're still side mount, which is pretty small profile to fit through tide caves. And they're, they've been cave diving for a long time, diving side mount for a long time. So, But I couldn't see where the main line really began. At last, we begin the dive with Todd leading the way. By the way, in this one, do you just try to tie the primary to the boat? I feel like might as well. Maybe those poles. If you think the entrance looks small, you haven't seen anything yet. We fight our way in against the flow and discover it's a pretty spacious cavern zone. Okay, there you oh, go. Yeah. Spacious-ish. <laughs> With an asterisk. But yeah, it's pretty, I mean, that, I, I'll go that far. That I, I'm with you. We'll do cavern dive. Well, just wait. That's. We have only a single video light to keep the GoPro rigs small. Oh, man. I so want to be there. <laughs> Now, everybody, um, I'm just going to comment. Sometimes you have to pull. That's all I'm saying. You can't always oh, not touch at the entrances, especially because some people may not know. Wow, he pulled and I don't want to get a million comments. You touch the case. You no. need to pull. There's Absolutely. tons of flow through there. It's not going to silt anything out in that area. Yeah. I follow Todd into the cave while he ties off our reel. Heading further into the cave, we quickly arrive at a tiny restriction going down into the floor. And that's the only way to proceed, so Todd pushes on down. Yep. Okay. It's a tighter squeeze than it looks. I mean, that looks like a cheese grater. I mean, well, let, just me, let me see it. how tight. I mean, he's getting his tanks down. No, he's got a lot of room above him. That's fine. <laughs> That's sidewinder material. Yeah, side mount only for sure. Yeah. And looks like he's touching the bottom, but oh, he plenty has of to. flow. Look at the flow. It's blowing that out right now. Once you get down in there, I can see the line, but there doesn't appear to be an easy way to follow it. The ceiling and floor are so close together, I'm wondering if I'll even fit. From behind Todd, I can see the problem. Man, this is one tiny cave. Todd picks the biggest opening and starts heading that way. There's literally just enough room to squirm through. Tiny, dude. So this is why I can't go. I, there's no way. I, like, I fit a jug hole, but here, forget it. There's no way. I don't know. I'm not no. even close to that. I need to talk to Medi. Yeah, no, I won't fit here. And Up ahead, then. Todd follows the main line. There you go. We expected the cave to open up once we got through the first restriction. And it has, but not very much. I'm hanging back far enough that if we need to turn around, we won't be kicking each other too much. By the way, this video is excellent. Uh, it's I the mean, best John, one. I mean, he's so good. Yeah, it's amazing. Best, best video of Shangri-La. But just Blue World, I mean, By the way, it's such ever. a classy way of, oh, they're no, just great, awesome. great underwater photographers. Thankfully, the floor of the cave is not super silty, and the silt we do manage to kick up is being washed away quickly in the flow of water. You have to there. Todd continues his slow progression upstream into the cave. I have it a little easier because I'm following but I have worse visibility being downstream. I mean, 
does this open up to something that's beautiful? There must be a reason to, to go in there. Okay. Let's keep watching. Good job. Just take your time. Look at the line going into that thing. You know, you and I are going to Mariana soon. Like this big. Remember, right? Yes. So, where's... We can... Don't just say yes and look away. You know where I'm headed. Not here. We can't pass this opportunity on. Not, not here. Won't fit. Maddie. Someone has laid line in here, so we know people can fit. But Maddie had said that in order to go further, you'd have to remove both tanks. Oh. And it looks like we've reached that point. Yeah. No mount. Oh. <laughs> That's not too cool on a rebreather. So, because yeah. I'm behind, I do a very clumsy turnaround and begin leading the way out. Oh, well, the no mount part is not screaming at me to do. I'm turning around as well, but there isn't much space. Obviously, Maddie's been through there. No mount. <laughs> I mean, bro. Soon we're both turned around and heading out. Good job, by the way, to those guys. They did awesome. I love the light mount on the helmet. Looks so stable. Notice their at last. Do you notice their breathing is so calm? Yeah. They're not getting hyped up. They're not. Oh my god. Oh my god. I got to turn around. I got to turn around. They're just staying chilled the whole time. We're they, doomed. No, but they know. They see there's a main line. They've yeah. been told. They've been briefed, and that's it, man. You just stay calm. And that area is. Uh, they're not exploring. That they're not the first ones in there. Right. But I'm just watching their breathing and. That's a really nice job. Oh, it, no, they did awesome. I think. Um, we claw our way. Sorry, I didn't mean to start it back. No, no, no. They, they did awesome. I mean, they went in as far as they went, and then they arrived to a spot where it required to go no mount. And, um, you know, I think one of the things I wanted to talk about is, well, what happens when you get to a position where there's no mount? Because I think that a lot of people that watches our channel, they have seen cave diving videos where they do do no mount, where the divers take their tanks off and push them through a hole. Uh, we've seen videos even of Mike Young doing that, um, no mount diving. But I think, you know, one thing that a lot of people don't know about cave divers is that there's really no rules when it comes to what kinds of caves and what kind of dives you as a cave diver can do. There's tons and tons of caves out there. Like there's people that will only do caves with no current, no flow. There's there's so many caves out there, especially in Mexico, for example. A lot of the cenotes have no flow. That you can cave dive every day in caves with no flow and see formation. There's miles and miles and miles of caves in Mexico alone, just in Mexico, that you can dive with no flow. And they are huge. They're not even tight like this one. Uh, there's people that like caves with a lot of current. There's people that like caves with warm water. I mean, there's all kinds of caves out there, and you can have your limitations. I think that when it comes to limitations, we're very similar on the fact that when it comes to a cave, our limit is not the tight squeezes and all of that. And I think that for people watching this, they're probably getting the idea that, oh, Gus doesn't want to go because the cave is too tight. No, I'm okay with being tight. We've had videos here in the past where that has been the case that we've been to through tight places. Mm -hmm. 
what my limitations are in cave diving is equipment removal. I am not comfortable. It's not that I'm comfortable. If I have to do it, I'll do it, and then I'll put it back in. I, I don't think I will panic removing a, a tank or something and, and, and putting it back on. But if there's a cave out there that requires me to take my gear off, take my rebreather off to fit through a hole, then I'd rather not go. I, I don't think that's enjoyable. Yeah, I don't disagree. Um, and I also, the only thing I wanted to add is that they are on open circuit. We're on a rebreather. Right. And for for non-divers, I know you divers are going to be like, come on, do I really need to tell you this? But for non-divers, the rebreather is much more intricate. There's so many more things hooked up. It's yeah. not that easy to get even the tanks off because now the tanks are controlling different parts of the rebreather and, right. and we're plugged into those tanks. So yeah, we can unclip the tanks, but then what about all the hoses that are connected to the regulators on the tanks? Yeah. Are they still going to stay attached because we need those? This would not be easy it's possible to do on a sidewinder, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I know it's possible, but not enjoyable. But not nearly not easy. as easy as it is for these guys. I think yeah. on open circuit, right? I, I so no, I don't want to go no mount, right? Um, so, because of that, the, right. just the complexity of getting all that off and back on. There's not a lot of room there, Gus, to to get this stuff off and on. Right. So what we're saying is, although it's possible to go no mount even on a rebreather. It's just not enjoyable. So it's work. a lot of work. It would have to be like, oh, there was a cave they found. And if you go no mound, once you make it through, there's a UFO on the other side and you can go diving inside of it. All right, fine. I'll go yeah. no mound. Yeah, and it may even be like, look, well, we got to go no mount, but I can reach you, Gus, like right up. I can unclip this for you if you can't reach behind you and you can then, you know, help. Me. Like, we need to talk this out so that it's yeah. not like, how am I going to get all this off and then back on? When I, you know what I mean? There's a lot to it. And we would I, I think we beat this up yeah. a lot, so anyway. let's keep going. Yeah. Way back to the hole in the floor and emerge back into the cavern. Wow, well, they get really no, no big spaces, do they? No breaks. Right there is a little bit. As much Good as we job. enjoyed that little adventure, I think we're both glad to be back into a space <laughs> large enough to swim. Yeah. In five minutes, all the silt we kicked up will be totally gone. It's time to head back to the light. Since we never exceeded 25 feet, we don't even have to do a safety stop. The shallow cave. Beautiful. Really beautiful. I love the angles he sets up for his film in. He's just really good, Amazing. really good at this. Yeah. He's like the uh, Ed Sorensen of underwater filming. By the way, can you imagine Ed going through there? It's just like flying <laughs> through there. Oh, 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 oh man! <laughs> that uh, that was that was uh, that restriction at the end where I turned. I don't think I could fit through. <laughs> Yeah. Without taking a tank off. So I went as far you as know, I could. It, it looked bigger inside than it was. And even as I went further, as far as I could see into that next area, it was the same low ceiling and mud. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I tried that second time trying to get through. And it's like, it's just like I have to take a tank off. It's just not quite wide enough. Yeah. Or I got to stop eating the pizza. Yeah, one or the other. That's, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shangri-La is one of the smallest caves in Merritt's Mill Pond. Okay. It's not deep, and it doesn't go very far. But it's an incredible dive for adventurous side-mount cave divers. Meanwhile, we have many other caves to explore in this extraordinary Jackson, pond. And the blue world. 
Oh yeah. Two days later. All right, so guys, we do we have some questions about this First, video. Before you ask any questions, <laughs> yeah. uh, I want to jump in and I just want to say thank you for being gentle. <laughs> to you. Thank you for being kind. Was, uh, it you know. <laughs> that was easy. That was I mean, easy. <laughs> There's nothing really to point out. I mean, the reaction, guys, was honest. I like I was frankly blown away. I do have questions, but I was blown away how both well you did and how well it was filmed. Like it was so clear. I, no I, pro on my, my first, was mostly my, him. Mine was not that clear. Uh, my first <laughs> question, too, because I want to set the stage for everybody is why this particular project? Why this cave? No, you knew ahead of time that it was super tight and that you wouldn't be able to go very far. So what brought you to that? Why? Well, you know, I think so. You know, there's there's like seven caves on the pond on Merritt's Mill Pond. Yep. And. This particular one is right near Jackson Blue. It's like 100 yards or 200 yards downstream from Jackson Blue. And the water that's coming out of it is a pretty strong flow. And it's nice and crystal clear. Oh, and yeah. like we said in the video, like you, you cave divers are attracted to that, like flies to uh, you know, <laughs> honey. So uh, we saw, you know, we, 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 the first day we were there, we had that cool little pontoon boat that we rented from Ed, you know, and we just drove around and we had a map of all the caves and we're trying to find them just to see what they looked like. <laughs> and a whole bunch of the caves yeah. on that pond don't have much flow. And so there, it's not like this beautiful, clear water billowing out of the ground. Most of them are kind of like, eh silty looking and they don't look super inviting you know but this one was like really nice and so we're like let's check it out and you know that's kind of where it started <laughs> and <laughs> and they listened to Medi, which was right. another uh okay. well we, we we did an initial pass on it first and then asked Medi about it and that's when we yeah. get the insight into Medi. but the entrance was just so appealing with the crystal clear water and you know it has to connect somewhere back there yeah um, no, i so that's I what led us to do the the initial entrance and we filmed it later yeah, I can tell. I mean, we were we were there uh, a, a couple of weeks ago and we we on the boat, we just went by it and you can see the blue like the entrance of it. And I'm like, wow, that yeah. looks awesome. Now, the part of the where you get to where you have to you made a decision to stop and turn around. Do you have to go what we call no mount through that? Or if would a you guys are familiar, you know, with the sidewinder, if you didn't have anything back mounted, could you fit through it? Or is it just impossible unless you have nothing on? Ah, uh, you know, I would, I, I think we probably could have pushed forward a little further. Um, but there was a, you know, one of the important questions I think during the dive was the fact that the line itself isn't really well set. The whole thing's a massive line trap. So the amount that the cave is going to silt up wasn't really known. And I, you know, I, I know from prior experience that if you have somebody who's behind you, whoever's number two in a cave like that, where you have like <laughs> zero visibility, they're not going to have a good time. Yeah. And, and so, and so the, the concern is the lead is always like, is the person behind me? Okay. And often you can't really see them. And I don't want to put the, the, the number two, in a position where they're sort of, they don't want to go forward because they're no longer comfortable. They want to thumb the dive, but they can't, you know, it's hard to signal in zero visibility. Okay. And then they have a decision to make, you know, do they, do they stay and potentially, and I, I would never expect this of Jonathan, but at some point everybody panics. And I've had people in similar caves situations before where they're just completely not comfortable. And then they're, they're in, and they're in a hard choice. Do they leave, which then kind of creates a problem for me. Or do they, um, or whoever's leading, really? Well, uh, but, or, but or, or do they stay and potentially go into a panic or just stay in a really uncomfortable situation? But now you've been there, and you can yeah. plan, and you know what's in there. Do you want? So, I get it on the first dive. You don't know yeah. what's going on, but now that you've been there, you could. Do you want to go through together? Do you want to figure out a way to get through that thing? And what's there. I mean, I don't know. I have not been in oh, there. Yeah, I would definitely, I, I think we both agree that we'd want to push it a little bit more, but uh, especially with the line trap situation, I'd almost approach it at least a little bit like a wreck where you're kind of doing it progressively because mm -hmm. there's, there's one point in the cave where 
the, the line is so far from you, but you can't really, you have to like sort of work outside of where the line is. Like you couldn't hold the line and, and make it around a, a, a very tight restriction. And it's not too far from the entrance, but you know, with zero viz and not knowing how quickly the viz would change, turn around. Um, it was just, it's, you know, one of the concerns because you always want to be able to get to a line, right. And get to know what your way out. Absolutely. So- so, I mean, I think the thing is, it was our first dive in the cave. Um, and we um, were not like mentally set up like, yeah, we're going to go no mount. We're going to do all. It was just like we were casually going to take our GoPros and have a look in this cave. And I think it's a very prudent thing as a cave diver to kind of just know, like, you know what? This is a restriction that we don't know what's on the other side. We don't know if there's enough room to turn around if we go through there. So if we take our tanks off and push them through, can we get back out comfortably or are we going to have to back out? You know what I mean? And and so that's kind of the point where you go, you know what? This has been good, but maybe we'll go talk to Mehdi who knows the cave and ask him what is on the other side of that restriction. And if he were to say, oh, dude, like totally, there's plenty of space to turn around on the other side that, you know, then we, oh, okay. We go back and we try it again. Mehdi had told me that when he does that cave, he does it with no fins. Oh, no. Wow. As you saw in the video, the fins don't really buy you anything. The yeah. cave's like this tall. I mean, you're basically, you're scrunching through it like an inchworm. Anyway, the caves <laughs> just kick a bunch of stuff up. Um, and then he also said that he does it no mount with a couple of 40s. Yeah. You know, instead of like 80s or 100s, he's using a, a pair of 40s. Um, and I don't know if he like takes a stage in for the first part and just leaves it and then pushes the forties through the restriction or whatever, but you know, he's, he configures himself to be as small as humanly possible. Whereas in, you know, we're in our standard side mount stuff with like hundred cubic foot steels, you know what I mean? Like, Hmm. like we're like big, like to get through there. So I, you know, I think Todd, you know, he made the right decision. He gets to a little tiny restriction. He's like, eh, no, I don't think so. We'll leave that for the next adventure. Yeah. Also yeah. the lack of a guide, because I, I'm sure you guys have done no mount, but yeah, if you're being guided by Brian Kaycock that says, right. take him off, go through the hole. I know what's on the other side. Then you do it without even thinking about it. It's not, that, it's not a fear of removing the gear. It's just, we, we don't know what we're doing. So right. well, some, somebody told you it's possible, right? Right. <laughs> right. And therefore right. you're going to do it. And that, you know, that that's a, it's a different level of diving when you're making those decisions in your own and you don't really know, can, can you get in and out? Yeah. And yeah. I love, I love what you said, Todd, and, and the video, I, I, I actually love the video specifically because of the two perspectives, right? You guys took turns being the narrator, uh, basically on, on the video. And I love that you said, well, the line keeps going in. So obviously somebody went in there, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, well, well, I think doesn't mean they made it out. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, but, but, on the other side of the restriction, there's a skeleton holding a reel. Right. But <laughs> actually, but what, what I what I'm I'm really glad we're having this conversation because what I want to always do with Dive Talk is promote that we can do what we do responsibly and safely and with good judgment. Right. And that's what you guys did. All the things that you're talking about are what goes into good, solid judgment when it comes to cave diving you hadn't been in there you don't know what's on the other side um this, you know can you turn around do we have the right gear configuration and that that is the attraction because we keep talking about why do we want to go in these caves that's part of the attraction is the planning and the thinking and the logistics that have to go into it and i think that you guys are demonstrating that in this conversation so take that messaging away everybody this this is really important. And the different mindset too, which is we've talked about this. People are like, how come you guys go in a cave? What if it silts out? We don't, we're not only okay with it. We sometimes look forward to it. It's like, oh, this is the part where <laughs> yeah. it's going to silt out. Awesome. Right. Like, okay, yeah. the line and go, right? Well, um, but the in mindset. That, in, in that cave, like there's a lot of flow. So we know that when we silt it up, it's just going to blow right out anyway. But the mindset different too between us that are cave divers and cave explorers. Like Mike Young would have gotten to the restriction. He's like, awesome. No mound. <laughs> like, and like he's looking forward to it. And we're like, yeah, maybe not. Well, <laughs> and that's right. We're not cave explorers. We, right. we, we, ha- we don't go into caves that we have never been to, but even though, like you guys said, even though this one had already been explored, 
who knows? It was a big who knows, and there could be a line trap and so forth. So are you going, I, 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 big question in the room, we've talked about you want to go back, you want to go further, are you going back, and are you going to go further? Oh, 100% yeah. we're going to go back. Um, yeah, at some point for sure. You know, we're, we're going to go back and we're going to do it, I, actually, we're going to do it with Medi because Medi was like, mm. you're going to let me take you the next time. We're going to do yes. it with Medi. And I, and I feel bad that we wanted to do it with Medi when we were there, but Ed like works him too hard or something. He had to work <laughs> in the shop every day. And he was like, I can go diving with you guys tonight. I'm like, dude, I'm, I've been diving all day. I'm tired. <laughs> I know he does but, that. It's yeah, Medi um, the uh, official underwater cameraman for Cameraman Medi. No, called. but he's always willing to go at night. And it's funny you said that, Jonathan. I'm always like, dude, I, I'm like, I got to go sleep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, to, to put this philosophy in, in you know, everybody thinks da- cave diving is dangerous. And I keep repeating this on the show is that cave diving is very, very safe. If you follow the rules, the rules were developed Perfect. to keep you safe. And if you take your ego out and just follow the rules, and one of the rules is that anybody can call the dive at any time for any reason. And if someone's not comfortable and they say, I'm not going through that little hole, let's call this dive and turn around. That's, that's what we do. And I was perfectly good with that decision. But yeah. um, like for, to put this in another scenario, we dove another cave on the pond that same week that you will have an episode on eventually. We have to stagger them so we don't become the cave diving channel. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And it was called Thank Gator you. Hole. Um, and it's a really, really cool dive. And, you know, we went into that one and we got in and it was kind of silty. Um, and we went through the first couple, we knew there were multiple restrictions and that there was plenty of space behind them. Cause we had talked to Ed about it and, and Medi, and we knew that it was okay, but we got in a couple, two restrictions in and it got really silty and there's not much flow and the silt wasn't moving. And Todd was like, mm, I don't know how silty it's going to be getting back out. Maybe we should turn here. Like, okay. So we turned, we went back out and then, you know, we had a conversation after that. And the conversation was, I think we can go further. I think that was fine. I was comfortable with that. Todd was comfortable with it. And then the next day we went back and we did it again and we went further and we were much more comfortable the second time because we knew what to expect. We'd done it once and sometimes just, you know, what, like what Todd said, like progressively becoming more familiar with a cave is the, is the prudent way to do it. It's also more fun because, you know, you get to dive in more than once. So, you know, now Todd, how come you're always the one running the line? Jonathan never, he's never the line guy. I feel like he always grabs the camera yeah, really he's, quick. He's, he's, better, like, with oh, the, sorry, he's better with the camera. He's the key camera guy, right? <laughs> I, get, I, I get to be the camera. cameraman. Well, but you know, we, and we've uh, done we've done parts where you've run the line before and we did your whole training thing and you didn't touch a camera at all for that. So that's true. Oh, yeah. Todd is Todd has been cave diving a long, long time more than me. So he's the he is the much more experienced cave diver of the two of us. So I make him do all the hard work so that <laughs> I can just film it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. that's awesome yeah gator hole we, we were talking about there but uh ed told me that i should probably not go because i'm not going to make it too far i assume one of the restrictions is insane it's the, like super the, tiny. The restrictions that are in it are very uh narrow from top to bottom but they're yeah. pretty wide yeah and so, like you don't you don't when you look at it you don't feel like oh my god i'm not gonna be able to turn around like it, it's like it's wide it's just low but yeah. once you go through the restriction, it opens up in each one. I think you'd fit fine, honestly. So how um, how tight is it compared to the bedding plane at Jug? It's t- oh, it's tighter than that. Yeah. No, yeah. the bedding plane. It's I also a silty bottom. The bedding plane is oh. rock and rock. Gator is rock and sand. So you yeah. can kind of wiggle through the sand, which is how you know how we silted the place yeah. up. Yeah, Ed yeah. told me no, and I I listened to Ed because he has a different different perspective. We were talking about Jug Hole with Ed. I'll tell you a quick story about it. Ed said, I've been to Jug Hole once and somebody told me that, you know, I was going to go through one restriction, the bedding planes, and then uh, just stay with the line. And then you're going to hit the a tough restriction, diamond sands. And then beyond that line, you know, you're going to get to the end of the line. It's only like 500 feet or something. So it's like, so I went and I start swimming and I hit the bedding plane and I go through that. And then I keep swimming. And at some point I do this. And I keep swimming and I make it to the end of the line. And I'm like, well, where is the restriction? I don't, somebody told me there was the second one. Wait, that it was a tough one. 
that was diamond sense. He just swam by it, like went diagonal a little bit and just kept going. They didn't even touch the rocks. Well, it's, yeah. uh, it's, <laughs> it's Ed Sorensen. Right. And then there's every other human cave diver. And I'm yeah, like, but he, he fits through things. When we were in Jackson blue, he went sailing right through this one restriction. And on yeah. the P the P peanut, right? The, the mm-hmm. one on the, yeah. The by the one cavern on the, the right main tunnel that's off on the right, like yeah, not that yeah. far from the entrance. We, yeah, we did an episode like, yeah. boop, right down there. And then <laughs> and then I went, we did did an episode where I was going to go through that. And I, I took a tank off and swung it around and I couldn't fit. Like, like there's a, you have to know exactly how to no, go. We just, you were, you were really close we, though. You all went, you came very close to fitting. You just had to turn like a, another half inch or so when you would had it, but guys, you, it, there's no way to communicate that. And guys, the, and watch the thing it, about watch, that is it, watch again, it. that's one of the things where if Ed had been with us when I tried it, he would have coached me through it and I yeah. would have been fine. But without yeah. the guru there, I'm like, you know, I don't really want to get stuck. Hey, guys, watch the end of the video that we have on Dive Talk right now. Jackson Blue, yeah. Jackson Blue. Where Woody that, made it. It's exactly the ending of this video. It's yeah. Patrick, Did you get through? Patrick yeah. going through and then me going through, but I'm small. So, I mean, uh, yes. It yeah. was and, pretty, then, and then Maddie looks at me. Maddie was our, again, he's cameraman Medi on Dive Talk. So he Maddie was filming me and then he's like, all right, you go. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Not on that one. It's very funny though. And we, I, I don't want to give away the funny part of it. So watch it. Yeah. it it's, it's, it's five minute segment. At the I'm end, gonna, I'm going to go check it out. Sure. <laughs> uh, but if you guys go back or when you go back now, you know, that you're thinking about going back to do Shangri-La as well. Uh, I don't know if you guys have done twin caves, but yep. it was my favorite yeah. dive. That whole Skiles mm. was it Skiles passage, mm-hmm. I think it's called. And that tunnel is just beautiful. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's when we were there, it was kind of murky. Was it clear for you guys? Oh, it was. That was clear. clear. Um, for hole me. in the wall. Was has, first. Hole in the wall. Was, it's <laughs> always been murky every time I've been in it, but. Hold yeah. the wall is murky, but Twin Caves was, was, was clear. super crystal clear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We're going to have to do that again, Tom. Yeah, there, there is. Well, you know, Hole in the Wall used to be crystal clear. It's weird. Um, I don't know why the past couple of times I've been there, and I've always asked why. Why is that one always murky? And that, yeah. Yeah. We went exactly. to the end of the line, a hole in the wall, 4,200 feet, the wow. end of the goal line. Um, and it just never got clear. I mean, we were silted yeah. bad on the way out. Yeah. We were okay in the line while on the DPV Zero for a long DPV, way, yeah. for 30 minutes of driving the DPV and okay in the line at <laughs> wow. like speed two. Yeah, you could not see anything. Yeah, it was yeah. it was tough. But uh, but Twin Caves, is, it was my mm-hmm. favorite cave. There is one restriction after the Skiles Passage at Twin Caves where you, I guess it's like hole in the wall, where it's like rock and then sand on the bottom. But it's that silt that you don't even feel, that you touch and your hand goes through and you don't even feel re- resistance. Yeah. Um, so as soon as you touch, it just poof, zero oh. is, uh, on that, on that tiny tunnel, but, uh, it's really, really cool. So check that well, out. Well, guys really, um, well done. I thought you guys Amazing. managed through there. I'm, re- I'm remarkable. So the reaction is positive because I'm like, these guys are really good. I'm, I, if we go in there, man, I hope to be able to do it as good as you guys did. You, you know, you pulled through carefully. You were filming at the same time. And, it's and, the best I, love, and, I, and I love the judgment call. Like that to me is a theme you may hear, even though we joke around a lot and we play around a lot. We're always, always trying to say cave diving. Like you said, Jonathan, follow the five golden rules of cave diving. Every single time you have a chance to follow one of those rules. If you have the chance to Im- implement one of those rules, implement the rule. Never err on the side of, well, maybe I shouldn't. So that's what you did on this. And I applaud you for that. Yeah. And the comments, you know, Todd saying, because we were so shallow, we don't have to do a safety stop. Just adding all those things, I think it's it enhances, enhances the video tremendously. It's educational. Yeah, it's yeah. a very shallow dive. Yeah, it is. I think I think you hit, I think you hit 25 feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice. Well, you guys did awesome. Can't wait to see. Oh, the, thanks, you guys. Thanks. Uh, Gator Hole. It. Gator Hole. You got to do our collaboration. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and overall, I've said this a few times to you guys. Thank you for really supporting us, even being willing to come on our channel. We're nowhere near your guys, uh, you know, audience and so forth. And you've been supportive of us from very, very early on. And uh, for both Gus and I, that really means a lot. And your work is spectacular, man. We could only hope to get to that level someday. Thank you. 
Well, you guys, you guys have got a, a, a really great audience of bringing people into the sport. And um, I think our audiences are a lot, a lot, well, that, I mean, there's a lot of convergence, but they're quite a bit different in that, you know, we're, we're aiming at like the family view, you know, where, and, and most of our fans tend to be younger. Um, whereas I think you guys are attracting more divers, people that want to be divers, people that are fascinated about divers. Um, and so I think like working together, we actually do a really good job at covering the spectrum, you know, of, of the next generation of scuba divers, uh, and Absolutely. Getting, out, yeah. getting into the, into the sport. Good and, synergy. And, and you guys, I really love how you guys like tackle the tech, tech diving type stuff. And, you know, the thing that, the things that people are really curious about kind of the stuff that we've started to do on blue world plus, except that you do it way better. So yeah. like, just keep doing what you're doing, man. And we're really delighted to be, to be, you know, working with you guys. And I think we should definitely do a collaboration. Awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's exciting. We, all, we can all meet at edge place, you know? Yes. Just, yeah. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I can't wait. Saturday. Let's do it. We're Saturday. going to be there Saturday <laughs> filming uh, an experiment with that, but we'll. Oh, you're going to be there. Yeah, but let's not talk about Saturday, that. Like in two days. Yes. Yeah. But I don't want to talk about what we're doing, but some pretty important and cool experiments. Uh, as technical as I guess. Really going to be interesting. I can't wait. It sounds good. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Right, um, thanks for having us. And thank you. We'll talk to you guys. Bye, guys. Later. Thank you so much. Bye guys. Bye guys. Bye, guys.